This video was created to assist you with repairing your classic style wind chime for both our Encore and Signature collections. You can use your own materials or one of our repair kits available for purchase on our website, chimes.com. Here are the materials you will need. The Woodstock Chime stringing instructions included in your kit or downloaded off of our website, chimes.com. The template that comes in your kit or you can also download one off of chimes.com. String. We're using an 80 pound gauge string for our chime in this demonstration. This string size also works with our seven inch tops. If you'd like to use your own string, we recommend using a braided nylon fishing line most commonly used for deep sea fishing. A wood chime top. A wind catcher. Clapper, that's the part that hits the tubes a staple gun, you'll also need a hammer, scissors, another good tool to use is a large needle like an upholstery needle, a ruler, a hanging ring, you can reuse the one you have or purchase one from your local hardware store. A common mistake is to use a key ring but they have a rough edge that could cause your string to break. A nail for use with the template, we'll explain this later in the video. And last but not least, don't forget your safety glasses. Okay, we're ready to begin. We'll start by stringing the top strings on the chime top. For this step, we will be using string, a wood chime top, a hanging ring, your upholstery needle, and scissors. For the five and a quarter inch top, you will need to cut your string approximately 35 inches. On your chime top, there are a set of six pre-drilled holes. This is for the top strings and metal hanging ring. On one side of the top, you'll notice that there are two holes that are drilled slightly larger than the other side. Place your thumb over these holes and flip the top over. You'll want this side face down to begin with the larger holes closest to your body. We're going to start with a set of holes on your left hand side. Take your string that has been threaded through an upholstery needle and pull it through the hanging ring and then through the hole labeled B on your instructions. Pull it back up through hole A and back through the hanging ring. Take the string coming out of hole A in your left hand and set it to the side. Continue threading the top the same way going clockwise, finishing at hole E, which is the hole on your right hand side closest to your body. Make sure as you're threading the top that you pull the string back through the hanging ring each time. A good way to tell if you've strung it correctly is if you pull the strings taut, it should form a sort of three-way intersection. Your kit comes with 20 feet of string, so if you mess up, you can always start again. Once you have pulled your string through the first five holes, take the string coming out of hole A and thread it through the last hole labeled F. Tie the two ends together underneath the wood top and pull one side so that the knot goes into one of the larger holes. Flip the top back over and pull the ring to adjust the string so that the top hangs evenly. For this step, we will be using your chime top template, a nail, the hammer, string, upholstery needle, a staple gun, and your chime tubes. We're going to be using the template, which we've cut out and taped to the chime top. Since there are six tubes, we'll use the red markings and tap the nail lightly with the hammer to score the wood at each attachment point. Don't forget to also mark the center where you will want the clapper and wind catcher to hang. Once you have marked the chime top, take your chime tubes and organize them in order from longest to shortest. Now, take a look at your chime tubes. If the chime is a little older, there may be marks where the clapper hits them. If so, lay the tubes with those marks facing up. Next, take your string and thread it through all six tubes at once. Leave about an inch and a half tail on the string and staple it to one of the marks you made on the chime top. It doesn't matter which one. Use your hammer to tighten up the staple so the string doesn't move. Lay the first tube on the table so the top of the tube is halfway between the stapled point at the next mark. 
Take the string on the other side of the first tube and staple it to the next attachment mark. The string should be pulled taut. Make sure you don't staple through the string or over an existing staple or nail. This could cause the string to break. Use your hammer again to secure the string in place. Continue this process while rotating the chime top and attach one tube at a time. Once you have stapled the last string, leave yourself about an inch and a half and cut the remainder. Twist the first tail that you started with and the last tail together and staple it to the top. Pull the twist back over the first staple and place another staple over it so that it's secure. Cut any remaining string, leaving about a three quarter inch tail. Don't cut it right at the staple or it could eventually pull through. You're almost done. Now we need to attach the center unit. For this step, we will be using the staple gun, hammer, upholstery needle, the clapper, that's the part that hits the tubes. You will also need more string and the wind catcher. Feed your string through the top of the feather, through the hole on the side. Now you will notice, if your chime is a little older, that there are some markings on the inside of the tubes where the clapper was hitting them. These age marks tell you exactly where to place your clapper. If there are no marks, you'll want to align it with the middle of the longest tube. This is where you'll want to tie your knot for the clapper to sit on, but make sure your string is long enough so that when you pull it back up to tie it, the feather hangs about one to three inches below the longest tube. If you look at the clapper, you'll see that one hole is larger than the other. String the clapper with the larger hole facing down so that it will sit on the knots. Give the string a tug and make sure the knot fits inside the hole. Hold the chime and center unit up to make sure everything is lined up correctly. Once you're happy with the placement of the clapper and feather, staple the end of the string to the center marking on your chime top. Hammer the staple and string into place, and then fold the string back over the staple and repeat, placing the second staple next to the first. Hammer this into place. Do not staple it directly on top of the first. Cut any excess string leaving a three quarter inch tail. Voila, we're finished. I hope this video has been helpful in restoring your classic Woodstock chime. Please visit us at our website, chimes.com, for tips on caring for your chime so that it lasts as long as possible. You can also find our full line of beautiful products for your home and garden.